Preach, lift, eat. Back here for another video. Preach, lift, eat. I'm not natty, just Jesus juice. Amen. What's going on, guys? Back here for another video, and it's time to go, go in again. Second video. I'm so excited to deliver to deliver a message to you guys tonight. So excited. God has laid something very awesome on my heart for you guys, and uh, it was very challenging. Just, just this week preparing, and I'm so excited for, for, for this day, for this video. But first off, hope everyone is well. Hope everyone is doing good. Hope you guys got to the gym today. Hope you guys cracked, up, cracked open your Bible today and read a few verses and, and just seen what God can do through you and, and uh, just all the amazing thing God has for us. And uh, I, didn't, I wasn't able to go to the gym today because uh, today I just had a long day at work and then right after work I had my sister's uh, birthday, birthday dinner, Cassidy, Archibek, I love you, happy birthday, yeah. So God has prepared something awesome for me today, I'm going to share a word with you guys and I just hope, I just hope you guys can open your hearts spiritually and, 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 and mentally and, and uh go into this into this word with with an open heart and an open mind uh, leave leave all stress and all anxieties all the all the problems that we may have leave it at the door leave it leave it leave it under the table and just take in what God has for you see what God can do through you so I was I was reading in Exodus Exodus is is one of the very first one of the very first the second book of the Bible in the in the, in the New Testament and it's just been super awesome to me because uh, it's it's very old school, but it's it's very awesome and it's very relevant to to uh, to this to this day that we're living in right now. So God led me to Exodus chapter two, verses twenty four and twenty five. Verses twenty four and twenty five says this in Exodus chapter two. God heard their groaning, and He remembered His covenant promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He looked down on the people of Israel and knew it was time to act and knew it was time to act. So obviously there's a problem there, right? There, there's a problem. And yes, you're right. There is a problem. Uh, Israel is, is a people there. They're, they're, uh, they're enslaved in Egypt right now. And, and they, uh, they're there because, because I'll give you some context in, uh, Joseph, who who was there before he had just passed away, Joseph was was the was second in command over Egypt. He was under Pharaoh, and and he had control over everything. But once uh, Joseph brought brought the people of Israel to to Egypt to make a better life for themselves and and to uh, just to make it because they weren't making it with uh, with the resources that they had elsewhere. So Joseph brought brought his people in God's people Israel to to Egypt. And they made a better lives for themselves, but unfortunately, Joseph had passed. And what sucked about that is uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh had passed too, and and the new king of Egypt had forgotten totally about what what uh, what Joseph did, what what Joseph's legacy was. So right away, the new king of Egypt uh, enslaved the people of Israel. He he made them slaves. He made them work. And it was it was a long time that that they were there in Egypt, that they were there in Egypt being slaved and and, and forced to work for for the bare minimum, uh, the hard times that they had to do in Egypt. But it just got to the point where they're like, we're sick of this thing, we're sick of this place, uh, we're getting paid dirt cheap. Uh, you know, it's 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 not like it used to be. We're sick of this place. Uh, God, you promised us something and. And we want it. And God's in, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 24 and 25, it said that God heard their groaning. He heard their cries. He heard their cries. He remembered his covenant, his promise that he made to Jacob, uh, Isaac, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And, and uh, at the end, I love how it says, he looked down on the people of Israel and he knew, he knew it was time to act. He knew it was time to do something. Let me tell you something today. God hears you. God hears your cries. God hears, hears what, what, what you're saying. God hears your heart. 
you know, some of you may, may, may be in the, in the situation where, where you don't think God gives a crap about you. Where you think, oh, this world is nothing but bad. Why, how could there be a God when, when all this bad stuff, all this situation, all this junk that I have to deal with, how can there be a God? God doesn't hear me. Let me tell you something. He hears you. He hears you. But here's the thing. They have to be loud enough that God can hear them. They have to be loud enough that God can hear those cries. That God can hear those cries. Not for anyone else. Let me tell you something. Not anyone in this world can, can, can give you what God can give you. God can take you out of those hard situations. God can take you out of those, out of those, out of those troubling situations. God hears you. The Bible says that God bends down. He bends down like 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 a father to a son. He bends down and he hears. The Bible says that God bends down and he hears our prayers. He hears what we're asking of him. He he hears us. Don't you ever think that God's ignoring you? But here's the thing: you have to call on His name. Call on His name, and he, and He will hear you. And he will remember the promise that he gave to you. He will, re he, will, he will remember the promise of all the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That, that there is a promise. There is a promised land for you. There, there, there is greater plans. His, his plans are higher than yours. His thoughts are higher than yours. And um, God hears you. He's not ignoring you. He's not ignoring you. I just love how, how the end it says, now he knew. He looked down. He said, "That's enough. No more of this. No more is my people. Are my people going to struggle? No more. No longer is 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 my are my people going to be in captivity and in slavery? No longer. Now is time to act. Now it's time to act. God and Israel, mainly Israel, they were sick of their situation. They were sick of their situation. And let me tell you something. You may be tired." of the situation that you're in today. You may, you may be tired of the things that you were going through today. You may be tired of, of, of getting, so, getting bad grades in school. Being a terrible student, you may be sick of those things. When I was in school, I, I, I never got to the point where I was just sick and disgusted with, with the way I was, with the, with the way my grades were, with, with the way that, 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 that I, I didn't really give a crap about my schooling. I, I never got to that point where I was sick and tired of, of being grounded all the time and never, never being allowed to go out and hang out with my friends because because my parents they they were never the type to be like oh you're just a young boy you know uh, you'll do better next time. No, they were like if you don't have good grades, man, you stay your butt in the house. You ain't going nowhere. But I never got to that point. I never got to that point where I was so sick and tired of just being in trouble all the time and not having good grades. Uh, you have to be. You have to get to that point where where your situation just disgusts you, right? Wait. Some of some of us have have, have grown so tired, are and so tired of of the way our body looks or or the way how we feel about ourselves. We're so self conscious that. That yeah, we we hate we we dislike the way we look or or we dislike the way things are things are the way they are. But unfortunately, no one is sick and tired. Not enough people are sick and tired of of the way that 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 their situation is that that the way their body looks or they don't have that that drive enough to to make that decision and say now's the time to act. Now's the time. I'm sick of the way this is. I'm sick of the way every time I look in the mirror, I just I just feel like trash. Every time I eat something, I just feel like it's going straight to my butt, straight to my thighs. And man, I just don't understand. Like, it's it's just amazing and it's it's crazy because we have to get to that point where where we're just like I'm sick of the way things are. This sucks. This sucks. And that's exactly where Israel is right now. The people of Israel, they're there. We're sick of this. And guess what? God is too. He's sick of this. That's why he says, now it is time to act. You may be sick and tired of the way your relationships are going. You may be sick and tired of every time you meet a new friend, they, they, uh, or a new girlfriend or a new, new, new boyfriend, they, and they just walk out of their lives. They get what they want and they walk out of your life. Let me tell you something, those people who told you that they were always going to be in your life and then changed their mind and ran away from you, 
Guess what? They don't need. They weren't. They weren't part of God's plan for for them to be in your life. Let them go. It makes me. It makes me. It, it just infuriates me because that's something that you take to your heart, right? That's something that you take to your heart and you say, "Yeah, I, I trust you. I know you're always going to be there for me. I know you love me." But guess what? God has greater plans for you. God has greater plans for you. And guess what? If if people are constantly walking out of your life and and you know, they they tell you they're going to be there and and they just end up leaving or or people just are in and out of your life because of just whatever, maybe that's something that that you need to work on. Maybe that's something that that's that that's your own issue that you need to confront with God and you say, God, I don't understand. Is it me? If it's me, God, change my heart. If it's me, I don't want to live like this anymore. Maybe, maybe, maybe I'm I'm that person that no one likes to be around. That could be the case. That could be the case. Don't get offended because that could be the case. That's the case of many people out there today because that's just something that 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 we're not used to seeing until we finally get sick and tired of it. Then we open our eyes and we're like, man. Could it be me? Maybe it's maybe it's me. Maybe it's me who's the problem. God, help me. Help change my heart. If, if there's a way that I need to be treating people that I'm not doing, God, help me, please. Help me, please. Help me. Man, we have to get to that point where we're sick and tired of the way things are. Slavery. Addiction. Finances being in the dump. If you're sick and tired of your finances being in the dump, you need to change something. You got to get to that point where, where you're just up, simply upset with the way things are. Your 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 bank account's always in the negative. Uh, you you don't have money to to do this and to do that. Man, you got to get to the point where where you're just fed up. I'm fed up with the way things are. I'm fed up with the way how I have no money. How how my bank account is always in the negative. Why is that? Man, we have to get to that point where, where it infuriates us. No more of this. Now's the time to act. Now's the time to act. And if you have an addiction, addiction is the worst, man. Addiction is the worst. If you have an addiction to the point where you're simply disgusted with 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 the with 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 the side effects and the outcomes of, of an addiction, man so hard it's so hard it is so hard every one of us have battled addictions but guess what there's no way that addiction is going to leave if you're not sick and tired of the way it's affecting you and guess what a lot of these things they're not just affecting you they're affecting the people that are looking at you they're affecting the people that are closest to you when you choose this addiction over over someone else or that's 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 a sign that's a sign straight from God that, that you need to do something, that you need to act upon it. No more. No more am I going to let this addiction bother me. No more is this addiction going to take over my life. No more am I going to blow off people that I love for this addiction. No longer. No longer. That's the way Israel feels right now. That's the way Israel feels right now. They're, they're so sick and tired of the way things are. They want change. They want something new. They don't want to be in the same situation forever. And I guarantee that you don't too. I guarantee that you don't too. Israel, the God of the God of Israel, he looks down on his people and he said, now is the time to act. Now is the time to act. How cool is that? How cool is that? God hears you. God hears your heart. God knows your deepest and, and, and most secret desires. He knows what you want to be free from. He knows what you want to be involved in. He, he hears your heart. That addiction, it's, it's a rough one. But just like I said, there's no way that's going to change. There's no way addiction is going to flee if you don't simply are sick and tired of the way things are. Sick and tired of the way that, that you just... You wake up every morning and that's the first thing you think about. Now's the time to act. Now is the time to act. 
Remember, Egypt, Israel, they're in Egypt. But guess what? Israel, Egypt is a state of mind. Egypt is a state of mind. Right? Because none of us are in slavery. But what, what, what would Egypt look like if, if, if that was us today? Well, I just named a few. Grades, weight, relationships, finances, addiction. What's your Egypt? What is your Egypt? What are you battling in slavery? What has hold, what has got you captive? What has got you captive that you need God to to rescue you from? To God to sit, for God to sit, to look down on you and say no more. Now's the time to act. Now's the time to act. Now's the time to act. The God that we serve is big. The God that we serve is big, and He does big things. That's why we need to pray big. We need to praise big. When we're in church and, and, and the music's playing, that's why we need to worship big because the God that we serve is big. He does big things. He does things in spectacular fashion. He does things big. He is a big God. He's not no weak little God. He's a big God. He is a big God. Now it's time to act, God says. He says, now it's time to act. Now it's time to put a plan together. Remember, remember this. God puts the plan together and you execute. God puts the plan together and you execute. God doesn't do it all by himself. God puts the plan together. Let me tell you this. John chapter 15, it says, For, I did, for you did not choose me. I chose you. How cool is that? For you did not choose me. You didn't make the decision to walk into church and be saved. Guess what? I made a way for you. I made a way for you to find that for to find that friend that invited you to church. I I made a way. I chose that path for that person at work to tell you about me. I chose you. So guess what? He also chooses the plan that you're on. He chooses the plan that you're on and guess what? It's up to you to execute it. It's up to you to execute it. God puts the plan together and you execute. Genesis 50, 20 also says this. Genesis 50, 20, it's a beautiful thing because in Genesis, Joseph was, was sold into slavery by his older brothers and they, they sold him into slavery and and years later, years later, they end up meeting back at each other, with each other, and the brothers are are so sad, and and they're just they're just they feel guilty about what they did to him. And uh, Joseph says, he says, he says, you intended to harm me. Genesis fifty twenty. Joseph says, you intended to harm me. You intended to harm me. You intended to hurt me. But God intended this situation all for good. He intended this all for good. He put me in this situation so I can save the lives of many people. How cool is that? How cool is that? He didn't get upset. He just said, "This this is what God planned for me." And guess what? I don't I don't I don't hate you. I'm not I'm not mad at you. Because guess what? God's plans are higher. God's plans are higher, even though they're crazy sometimes, but they're so much better and they're so much higher. Remember I told you that Joseph was was a second in command of, of Egypt. That's where his brothers, that's where he was put in that position. If, if his brothers had, hadn't sold him into slavery as a young boy, he would have never got there. God's plans are higher. I just encourage you to, to, deep, to dig deep into your Bible. And look, this, this, uh, this lesson it it isn't to, it isn't to, to blast you for for these situations that you may be in. It's it's to it's to make you understand that 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 the way for for to see progress and to see true changes in your life and to make and to make things happen is that those situations that have you captive and have you held in slavery in your mind, in your physical body, in in your mental aspects. Remember, Egypt is a state of mind. What is your Egypt today? 
What has you in slavery that God wants to break the chains off of you? The God that we serve is a chain breaker. He breaks chains. Not only does he break chains, he renews he, uh, he puts life into broken bones, into dried up bones. He puts life into dried up bones, and he wants the best for you. He wants the best for you. He, he doesn't want you in slaves. He doesn't want you in chains. He doesn't want you, he doesn't want you uh, locked down all the time. He doesn't want you in stress. He doesn't want you in depression. He doesn't want to see you in addiction. He wants the best for you. Now it's time to act. What is it that you have to act on today? What is it that you have to act on? Preach, lift, eat. Preach, lift, eat. That's what we do. Check out the shirt that I'm rocking. Lord's Gym. Lord's Gym. The sin of the world. Bench press this. How cool is that? Check out the back. His pain, your gain. All right, so I'm sure you're wondering about the title of this of this video, Praying for C.T. Fletcher. C.T. Fletcher is an OG, OG, OG of, of the fitness community. He was a power lifter, and I, th I even think he did some bodybuilding, but he was an awesome power lifter, and, and he set the mark. He set the, he set the tone for... For a lot of fitness people, a lot of fitness communities, everyone knows C.T. Fletcher. But the thing about C.T. Fletcher today is that that he just uh, he just went through a heart transplant. He went through a heart transplant. I think he's I think he's around 50 years old, and uh, you know his his body is to that point where 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 he needed a heart transplant. His his heart was failing, and thank thank God that that. That someone that that they found one for him that that they were able to do that procedure and and come out successful. Um, I think just a few days ago he he came out of surgery and I think he's recovering very well. But uh, we're just gonna pray for his for his life. We're gonna we're gonna ask that that God just keeps his hand of protection on him because because uh, CT's a Christian. I I know that and and. Uh, I just know that God has always had His hand upon C.T. Fletcher, and, and I just, and we're just gonna, we're just gonna declare and decree that that God just carries out the rest of C.T.'s plan, and and, and that that C.T. executes the rest of God's plan. So we just, so we're gonna do that today. We're gonna pray for C.T. Fletcher. C.T., we love you, man. We hope you get well. Jesus, we just love you, Father. We thank you for everything that you do for us. We thank you for your word, Jesus. We thank you for, for, for your, the life that you lived. We thank you that that you lived a sinless life. That that you uh, that you walked this earth and and you performed miracles, awesome miracles, Father. And, and we just we just thank you for your word, the life that you lived. We thank you for the death that you died on the cross. We thank you that, that you rose from the grave three days later, defeating death and rising into heaven for, 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 for our eternity, for our eternal life, Father. And I just, I just pray today that, that this word uh, fills people's hearts, Jesus, that, that, they, would, that they would act on, on, a, on making a new change for their life, Jesus, because some of us have, have been stuck in slavery. Some of us have have been stuck in in mental depression and and physical depression and i just ask that that you would ch break chains and and uh restore broken bones restore families restore relationships jesus uh, i just ask that that addictions would flee in the name of jesus that that you would just come through for us every time just like you always do father right now we lift up ct fletcher jesus i just ask that that your hand of protection is upon his life, Jesus, and I just, I just thank you for the person that he is, the inspiration that he is to so many people around this world, Jesus, and I just pray that, pray that uh, his recovery would be speedy and, and effective, Jesus, and I just thank you for his life, and I just ask that you bless his family, give his family peace of mind, give his family rest, 
more than anything, Jesus, give him rest. Give him peace of mind, Jesus. I pray for a double portion of your peace, Jesus. Not the peace of this world, Jesus. Your peace upon C.T. Fletcher's life, Father. And I just thank you that that you're 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 the God of 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 reliability and and um, and and favor, God. I I, I just thank you that that. Uh, you put us in into the shoes that we have today, into the homes that we have today, Jesus. I thank you for everything that you do for us, Jesus. And once again, Father, I just I just ask that you you would bless C. T. Fletcher, you would bless his company, you would you would you would flourish his company and, and his gyms around the world. And I just I just ask that you give him uh, the amount of years that that it would take for for him to be even more effective than he is today, Father, even more inspirational, Jesus. And I just ask that you keep your hand of protection on him at all times. Jesus, I love you and I thank you. Father God, I, I, I lift my hands to, to the fitness community today, Father, that, they, that that you just keep everyone healthy. You keep them safe while they're training, while while they're eating their food, Jesus. And I just ask that you, you keep everyone safe, you keep them healthy. Jesus, we just love you more than anything, Father. We thank you for, for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you that, that you love us for who we are, Jesus, that, that we don't have to that we don't have to meet these expectations for you to love us, Father, or for, for you to hold on to us, Jesus. You want a relationship with us, God. We love you and we thank you. In your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Preach, lift, eat, guys. Reach, lift, eat. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good night. I'm going to stay sipping on the rest of my, my aminos for the rest of the night. And then wake up, get to work. And we'll see you next time.